Hi, it's Rob from Brush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint Gothmog, Lieutenant of Sauron. If you like the channel and you'd like to support me, my Coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. And please like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Now on to the video. So here we have the finished Gothmog on top of his wag. You see quite a little bit of detail on this miniature. The fur on the shield, the actual miniature itself. Really, really detailed and really cool miniature. But I'll be painting this up alongside the Gothmog on foot, who is just coming up here. And here he is. So I'll be painting these side by side. So if I'm using, say, Rakarth Flesh, I'll be doing all the Rakarth Flesh on both miniatures. If I'm using Corn Red, it'll be all the Corn Red on both miniatures. So just to be aware of that, if you are using one of the colours, I'll be doing it on the two Gothmogs and on his Warg. So the first colour I'm going to use is Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to use this to paint the lighter shades on the Warg. So if you look at the colouring on the box or on the Games Workshop website or anything like that. It's quite a light colour up until it gets to that thick shaggy hair at the front. So we're going to paint this all with Rakar flesh and then just leave the thicker shaggier hair to do in a moment with a slightly different colour. Next colour is going to be Citadel Dryad Bark. I'm going to use this to do the thicker, shaggier hair. Much like on Gothmog, we're going to be using the Dryad Bark to do the top of the fur, which comes up over his shoulder. And we're going to be using Rakarth Flesh to do the lower part of the fur on his back too. You can see doing the Dryad Bark on this fur here, it kind of goes down the side of the head a little bit, leaving a little bit of the Rakarth Flesh around the face. And then on the underside as well, you've got that thick, bit of hair underneath too that kind of goes around and joins up with the top part now we're going to use a little tiny bit of citadel lead belcher which i'm not going to show you because it's a big secret so we are going to use citadel lead belcher here and do the shield we're also going to do the head of the mace and the two little rings either side of that leather strapping on the handle too on gothmog you're going to be using the lead belcher to do all the armor plates and then the same again on his shield and on his mace that he's holding in his hand. If you've done the sword, just paint the sword with the lead belcher too. That will be absolutely fine. I'm going to use some Citadel Corn Red to paint all of the cloth on his clothing. So you've got this going around most of the pieces of armour. So his trousers, a little bit on his tunic and then the sort of sleeves of his forearms and upper arms too and a little bit on his side where he's got that raised arm also going to use this to do the inside of the warg's mouth I'm going to use citadel pallid witch flesh on his face so do this on both of the Gothmogs. Do like the way that you can remove him from the Warg if you want to. Have him separate or have him sitting on a Warg. Or indeed just stood up on the base here as well. So they've made it really versatile for whatever you want to use him for in your army. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Bane Blade Brown. You can use this to do all of the strapping. So he's got the straps on the handle of his mace. You've also got straps holding on all of his armour plates and holding the shield on his back. And you've got straps all the way around the Warg too. So there's plenty of bits that you can do with the Bane Blade Brown. Now I'm going to use Citadel Agaros Dunes Contrast. I'm going to use this to do all of the lighter coloured fur. Now when you're putting this on, you don't want to let it pool like you usually do with contrast. I'm using this more of a wash. So you're just giving it a thin coat of it to stain that Rakarth flesh, that yellowy kind of colour. So if you let it pool, you'll get really dark patches. You don't really want to do that. Just give it a brush over as though you're painting it with it. 
you're not leaving it to go thicker in the recesses, you just want to get that nice yellow tinge over all of the fur, or all of the Rakarth flesh fur, I should say. Now we're going for Citadel Wildwood. I'm going to use this to colour all of the fur, the thicker fur at the top there. So you want to get that nice and dark, sort of maybe the top bits where it's really, really long. You see a distinct sort of area where those longer stretches of hair become the shorter stretches. So I'm just using this on the longer parts at the moment. And then we are going to use a little bit of Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast to do all of the leather strapping. This is on both the Warg and on Gothmog. Gothmog's flesh, we're going to use Vallejo Red Wash. I'm just going to give this a really, really thin layer of this. If you put it on in a big, thick layer, like you saw when I applied it there, because I've just put enough to do the whole head. If you apply it like that, you'll end up with some really, really deep red and dark red kind of areas on it, and you want that really kind of light red shade in the recesses. So just paint all of his flesh with this, much like you did with the Agaros dunes on the warg. Just give it a nice thin layer just to get that pink hue to the skin. Now I'm going to use Citadel Caroberg Crimson. We're going to do this on all of the corn red just to get that nice dark shading in the recesses. Next it's some Citadel Nuln Oil. I'm going to use this on all of the armour. That'll get into all the recesses and give that a nice load of detail. Makes that all stand out and look really, really cool. Now we're going to use Citadel Corn Red, and we're going to start reapplying the colour to the cloth. So you're thinking about the way the light's going to catch it. You want to be doing the top edges to all of those creases, and the tops of all of the kind of crests on those creases, to make it look like the light is catching those, and leaving the shade on the underside and in those recesses, so you get that nice layered look to it. Now, much like we did with the Moran and Orc tutorial for the cloth, we're going to be using Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet to do the next highlight. So you want to be doing about 50% of the corn red on the top surface in the areas where it'd be catching the most light and making those stand out. Now we're going to use some Citadel Wild Rider Red. We're going to use this to highlight the creases and the crests of each of those creases. More, like, more or less like an edge highlight just to make those stand out really, really well. Slightly off camera there, unfortunately. But I'll link up the Moran and Orc cloth tutorial that I did just so you can see how I'm applying that maybe a little better. Now we're going for Citadel Agrax Earthshade. We're just going to give the armour a wash of this as well. This gives the armour that slightly darker and tarnished look that you want to have for your Moran and Orcs. 
They want to make it too dark, like the Isengard orcs, like the Urukai, because their armor is pretty much like cast iron black. So you give this a nice wash of a Grax Earth Shade, and it'll give it that sort of worn and weathered look that you want for these guys. Now we're going to go for some Citadel Pallid Witch Flesh. We're going to start reapplying the colour back to his skin. So when you're reapplying this, I'm using a small layer brush from Citadel for this part. And you want to be applying this and leaving the shade in the recesses. So be really, really careful when you're reapplying it. If you leave the shade in the recesses, you'll get that detail standing out, but not too obviously. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of Vallejo White, but whichever white you tend to use, with the Pallid Witch Flesh, and we're going to start doing highlights to Gothmog's skin. So again, think about where the light's going to catch it and where it's going to stand out. You want to be applying it to those areas. So if you've got the Pallid Witch Flesh on the cheek there, you want to be doing, say, the top half of that cheek with the mix, just to give that that extra highlight on the top edge. I'm going to use some pure white. We're just going to pick out his teeth, which he's got a few little ones in there, almost like sloth from the Goonies. Also going to use this to do his eyes, which is quite difficult on this miniature. He's got really narrow kind of eyes, so it's quite tricky to get the brush in there. He's also got that kind of overhanging brow and the big cheek on one side as well, which makes it a little bit more difficult. But it's not too bad if you can use a really thin brush to get in there and just put a little tiny thin line of white in there, that'll be fine. I'm going to start working on the Warg's fur now, so we're going to use Dryad Bark, start reapplying this to the top section of fur. The middle section of fur beneath the Wildwood, I actually use Citadel Null Oil to wash that. So you just want to be redoing this fur. Now I initially started doing this painting on each of the little bits of fur which was taking ages and ages to do so then I changed it to use a little it's an old medium layer brush which has got a bit of a naff tip to it now so I used that and dry brushed the dryad bark back over it then I'm going to add a little bit of rakarth flesh to the dryad bark and start reapplying it to the smaller areas of fur on here because there's not too many now we're going to gently dry brush that over sort of the top two thirds of those longer bits of fur on the top of its back. I'm going to add a little bit more Rakarth flesh and do another little layer of highlights, dry brushing this over the top. I'm kind of using the side of the brush here just to get a little bit more paint on those bristles to get the highlights going. Final part of the mix, we're going to add a bit more Rakar Flesh to the previous mix, and we're just going to lightly dry brush some extreme highlights on these brown bits of fur. You can see I'm not being too accurate with this, being a little bit more slapdash just to get them done and get the highlights on there. Now we'll get them just light enough so that when we move on to the next colour, which is just pure Rakar Flesh, we can do some little tiny highlights with them once we've done a little bit more on this kind of yellowy part of the lighter coloured fur. So once again I start putting them on one by one and it seems to take forever. So I end up doing what I did with the rest of the fur and just lightly dry brushing these parts. What I found is because you've got a lot of different angles on the fur when you're doing it you have to dry brush 
from a few different angles to get it otherwise you end up blobbing some of the paint on there and getting into some of the detail so if you are dry brushing the shorter fur make sure you do it in different directions so that you just catch the actual tips of the fur and not the bits in between where you want that kind of yellow colouring. So now I'm going to add a little bit of white to the Ricard flesh and we're just going to do some edge highlights on the bits of fur. So again start doing them the best of intentions like so and then realise it's going to take me years and years to finish this one miniature or longer than usual anyway and so I'll just dry brush them on. Also make sure that I'm doing the highlights on the snout and round the face of the WAG too. Getting those highlights on there. So we're going to go on to Dryad Bark and start using this on Gothmog now. So just going to paint the shaft of his mace with this. They're going to use a little bit of Citadel XV88 and just do some kind of line highlights on this as though it's the grain of the wood at the handle. And finally we're going to use some pure XV88 just to do some final little highlights on the shaft of that mace. We're also going to start using this on the leather strapping too, so all those straps holding his armour, his belt, and all those straps going across the wags back too. We're also going to use XV88 on them just to start doing some highlights on the edges of it. As they've got that little concave bit in the middle, you can do some highlights on either side of it. And try not to do it all the way up and down it because I want to make it look a little bit worn. We're going to highlight that in a moment with some Balor Brown, so you don't have to be 100% accurate with this again, because we are trying to make it look a little bit worn and maybe used too. So now it's going to be some Citadel Balor Brown. I'm going to start highlighting the areas that we've just applied the XV88 on those leather straps and on his belt. I'll link up a video of how I paint kind of leather in this kind of style, just so you can see the effect that I'm going for a little bit more clearly using a pouch or something like that, I think it is on the video. I just want to do a little bit of highlights with Balor Brown and that'll make that stand out quite nicely. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Dry Necron Compound. I'm just going to gently dry brush this over the armour plates. And that'll give you those nice, rough, shiny highlights on the edges of the armour plates. Slightly off camera here, unfortunately, for some parts. We can see just a quick drag of the Necron compound over the armor plates gets the shine on the edges and makes all the details stand out loads, which is really, really cool. Very quick and simple way to get them looking really, really good. Now we're going to use a little bit more Vallejo Red Wash, and this is going to be to do around the eyes of the wag, so I'm putting a little bit of that into where his eye is, and then just absorbing a little bit with the brush. So you've still got the white of the eye, but you've got that kind of red rim around it. Also using this to go around the mouth and give that a little bit of a pink look where you've got that kind of Rakarth flesh color on the edge of the mouth too. Now I'm gonna use a little tiny bit of Citadel Pink Horror, and this is gonna be to do the inside parts of his mouth and his tongue too. So I'm not going too wild with this. You can just do a few little highlights on the side and the front of the tongue. And that will make it look fine because you've already washed that with Caribbean Crimson. It makes you have that sort of deeper red on the corn red of the tongue. This is just some nice highlights. Now I'm going to use a little tiny bit of Emperor's Children and do a smaller bit once again, just on the very edge of that tongue. Just so you've got two nice little highlight shades there. And that'll make the tongue look really good. Okay, so his teeth have already had Rakarth flesh on when we reapplied the Rakarth flesh. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Ushabti bone just to do about 50% of each tooth of them, make them stand out. Now ordinarily if it was a bigger area I would have used some Seraphim sepia on them to do a bit of shade around the edge. Because we use Caribbean Crimson on the gums and the mouth too, I'm not going to bother with that. Now I'm going to go for some Citadel Screaming Skull just to do some final little highlights on the tips of each tooth.
And then the start of the final part, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Black just to do each of those claws on his feet. Some really dodgy footage in this section, so apologies for that. Basically, each toe, you just want to colour in the claw at the end with the black that you use. doesn't matter if it's Citadel or Vallejo, whichever black it is. You've also got the little claw at the side of each front paw and the little kind of nub and thing at the back of each leg as well. Or at the back of each front leg. But again, the highlights each of those claws with a little tiny bit of German grey. So just catching a little bit of that on the top and trying to do like a little bit of almost like a triangle where it's a bit thicker towards the back, towards the paw, and then a little thin bit going down, maybe 50% of the claw. And we're going to do a final little bit of highlight of Mechanica Standard Grey and just putting a little tiny thin line in each of the German grey sections with this. And with that you have the finished Gothmog. Really pleased with how he turned out. Went with the mace because he looks a little bit more brutal than the sword, I think. But really pleased with how it turned out. It's a cracking miniature with tons and tons of details. I love that armour on it. It stands out a little bit more than the Moran and the Orcs where you've got those sort of like, almost like little barbs on the edge of the armour plate. But it also looks really, really cool with the Warg and Satastride that. The fact that you can remove them afterwards as well so you can just have the Warg on its own. Absolutely great little set, great little miniatures. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to all the social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support me, please like, comment and subscribe. If you'd like to do some direct support, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.